I'm glad he took me up on my invitation to join me in the studio. Please take a seat. Ooh. Oh, you call me a midion. I just have another cup of tea. Right, I'd like to welcome you back. And um, yes, I'm not going to start another painting with a girl with a poor earring. I've done it to death. Yes. I showed you everything there is to know about that particular painting. Now what we we've all done is gone. How did you do that? How did you do that? How did you do that? Well, you can watch it as many times as you want because I invite you to do that. However, I have been asked one particular question about that painting, and that was how do I paint folds in clothes? Right now, the very very easiest thing to explain that is don't try and do it from your mind. It doesn't work because it's bad enough trying to know what a cloud looks like or a tree looks like from you. We need a reference material. There is a piece of reference material that I've printed from the computer but it doesn't give an accurate fold. Only a, photog a, a photographic, <laughs> a photographic fold. But let me show you this. When I'm painting clothes or material or anything like that, especially in portraiture, I do this. I get an old t-shirt. It doesn't have to be black. It could be any colour. It could be a towel. It could be a bit of um, bedding, whatever. And I'll chuck that on to the back of my chair. Have a look. And I can arrange the folds in the fabric as I want and you can see already I've got deepening shadows there, a, light in, a lighter area there, i got some mid-tone range areas there and if I want to find a specific fold in the fabric for the um, item or whatever it is that I want to paint that's exactly what I do so that's a quick tip so that's one quick tip out the way. So use some fabric or some reference material and that will give you a more of a, a, a real, what it is, it's a, it's a real thing to look at, to copy, and you can arrange it as it, whichever way you want and then transfer that then as a drawing and then into your painting. So that's a quick tip as far as that's concerned. Now, let's move on to the, um, the I tend to paint my, folds in clothes and stuff and materials black and white and then I glaze over it that's indirect painting but you can do it direct painting as well which is mixing and using the colour that you're actually going to use for that bit of material I've got a canvas here which I put a grey ground on and, and I don't know if you already know what a ground is basically it's, it's, it's a colour wash to get rid of that brightness of the canvas because it's going to interfere with my eyes so I put a very light grey ground onto the canvas and I've sectioned it off with a bit of pencil. I am now going to draw her shoulder there and copy it there. So I'm going to do an indirect painting that side and I'm going to do a direct painting on this side. And I'll show you the two different techniques that I use to paint folds in clothes. So I'm not going to bore you with the actual pencil drawing. I might start it just in case you think I'm going to use a tracing, but I'm not. There's nothing wrong with the tracing, a projector, any way you want to get that line drawing on there, because all it is is a line drawing. So I've got a colour and I've got black and white. That's important because your black and white gives you your tonal range. And you will see me later on using a, um, a grayscale stick, and that's for me to adjust the, the tones, values, and that on my canvas. So top of the shoulder very quick and easy I'm not going to bother with the pearl or anything like that. And this area is not going to be painted. So, As 
you can see I can draw. Now, that's all you need is this. A basic pencil outline and that's all we need to do as far as drawing for painting is concerned. This is just a rough guide and as I've said in the past oh, oh my, why is my thing? And I'm sorry I'm knocking my tripod. And as I said in the past what you can do instead of using um, charcoal or um, dear me I'm dropping everything instead of using charcoal or graphite you can use a watercolour pencil and that way that watercolour pencil will dissolve into what uh, into the paint basically and it'll disappear so I'm not going to bore you with doing the other line drawing it's just not worth it and we'll get back to this as soon as I've done the other line drawing I will see you shortly And that's it. So let's have a look at the grayscale one first. I think that's the most important one. And I'll show you how I get that looking just pucker. So I've got three magic tools in my arsenal when it comes to doing folds and clothes and that on canvas and canvas board and masonette and whatever else I want to paint on. And that's the first one is a grayscale stick and that goes from pure white to pure black and it's in a gradient and that's what gives me my values. It's a value stick and I made it myself very quick and easy. Check out another YouTube video which I have made and that will explain to you how I've used it and that always goes on my board about there. Can you see that? There you go. So it goes about there and that gives me the value scale that I need to work to. The other thing is this Gessos, yes. White gesso in a pot in a squirty bottle. Check out the YouTube video. And a black gesso in the pot. Check out the YouTube video. I have got grey gesso which I've mixed with white and black, but you don't need to do that because that is a set value grey. And I don't want that. I want to be able to manipulate my grey value. So, gessos and grayscale stick. And that's what I do when the painting with. This is what, exactly what we're going to do now. So, let's go back to the canvas. Alright. So, we're going to start on the left hand one first. And I think it's important that I'll make sure that I put um, black and white in direct and that's colour direct just in case I forget because my brain doesn't work very well I'm going to get some gesso on the um, palette now and I'm going to select the brush don't know what brush I'm going to use yet but um, it doesn't really matter as long as you are happy with it but I will tell you what I use and Maybe you can use the same brush, it's up to you, I don't mind. Right, I'm just going to go to the ballot, so give me a couple of minutes, I shall be back. I need it. Now I know what you're thinking. Why is he using that palette when he's been telling us all along to use a wet palette? It's for ease of use really, for me, so I'm sorry. But there is a way to actually use one of these palettes as a wet palette and I will put it put in a tip on YouTube shortly. I like using a bristle brush and this is a filbert brush. It's a small filbert, well it was, it is now, I don't know what size it was originally because I've used it so much by scrubbing it in that it's worn down. But the reason I use a bristle, it's got a little bit more um, firmness to it. It's not so forgiving as is uh, man-made. Look, see how, how that bends with my finger? So I don't want that flexibility in this particular stage. I need a firmer brush. 
so I, I tend to go for a bristle brush. Now if you want to soften a bristle brush, just hit it with a hammer. It works. Trust me, I'll do another tip on YouTube, yes. Let's get on to this and let's put the first section down and then, oh excuse me, oh, I don't know what was in that tea, I will explain as I go. All I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of white there and I'm going to pull a touch of black, when I mean a touch of black at the time, I mean that much, look, that's how powerful that black is. I'm also using um, some water with some flow retarder in it and um, a little bit of uh, flow improver in it. I'm not my medium mix, medium mix, not my medium mix at this particular moment and I'm following this painting. I've already got a, 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 a nice grey down and what I'm doing is just going in roughly where I think the highlights are. I know that seems strange at this stage but I've already got a, a nice grey down and this will all be self-evident shortly. You can see that um, watercolour pencil that I've used is bleeding into the paint already. Now we can get rid of that later on. Washing my brush, wiping it on a bit of toweling, which is a good idea to have actually on the one side. And I put in some pure gesso into the collar. Not overly worried about the um, fundamental correctness of this as at the moment. Now we've got a nice dark area in here which I want to put in because this tends to come down like that so we need to establish that. But this particular area is really dark as is this area there so we'll, we'll incorporate that now Scarf comes down there, and there we go. We've got a dark area here again, just to go, <coughs> excuse me, going into the black. And folds are basically made up from lights and darks. If you look what I'm doing here now, if I clean my brush to get rid of the black and get some white bring a bit of black into it like I said just a touch just to grey it off a touch and then if I put a line there onto the black and a little bit of a line there already I've started to develop that that fold I'm constantly looking at my grayscale stick as well, hello, grayscale stick as well. But you need to be vigilant as well with this. <clears throat> Why do I use gesso as well? I find because they're chalkier obviously than um, acrylics and you've got a little bit more playtime with them and they're a little bit more forgiving and you can do a little bit more blending and you'll find that they they will be a lot easier to, to manipulate on the canvas. So we am actually scrambling this into the black to get that transition between that black shadowy area and the the mid-tone range of the fold. Now looking at this, this area here is going to be darker than that so I need to add a bit more black to my mix. I 
and we're just blending that through. You've got to practice this because all you're doing really is laying down light, dark, light, dark, light, dark and that's all it is. It's not rocket science. And as I've said before, try and paint with the way... Now that, that's going this way because it's a, it's a shoulder so you need to paint that way. Don't go across, you need to paint with it. I'm using very little water with this. Another darker area there. And all I've done is pulled a little bit of paint that I had up there of the brush. As the tip had white on it, but the top of the brush by there had a little bit of black there because I noticed it as I was painting, so I just scrubbed it on the side lap and I brought that into play. And if your brush starts getting a bit overloaded, wash it out, put it onto your toweling or your kitchen roll, and then using the moisture that you've got in the brush, just blend that through and drag it down. I've got some noisy neighbours here tonight, but it doesn't matter. And you can see. Because I've already put that grey um, ground down, that if I wanted that particular grey there, I don't even have to mix it, it's there already for me. So there's a lighter area now, so I'm just going to pull some white up. And just play with that. And then we've got a darker area down here. <clears throat> washing my brush again and cleaning it out, rubbing it on my towel and tapping it onto my kitchen roll and all I've got is the moisture in the brush and I'm just going to blend that through. Unless you're actually doing a, do an accurate copy painting or something like that, if you're going to do these type of paintings, then you're going to need to study the the shadows and once you know how it's done then it's quite easy for you to copy that well within reason I found the girl with the pearl urine quite difficult actually but and you can see I'm already starting to develop the folds there so if I wanted to put a, a lighter area there and then again washing my brush taking it onto the kitchen roll, tapping it into my kitchen roll and then just blend that through I can afford to go a little bit darker there And I can go back into a bit of white and I can blend that through. A bit more white again. I'm dry brushing it now. I'm not. I've got no moisture in the brush. I've got no paint on the brush. Only what's residual is there. And I'm just basically scrubbing over. Now I'm picking up a little bit more white, just a just a smidgen of black. Nothing much. And you can see my palette. Look, oh, there it is. You see my palette. I've used hardly any mixing space at all. And the only uh, moisture I've got is in the brush now. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna now that's a bit dark so I need to put a bit more white to it and 
and don't forget you can always rub it with your finger if you want that transition and if you find that the white you're putting on is not staying white and it's graying off then wet, let your painting dry don't try and rush this process I'm well aware that I can make it look easy and I'm well aware that it's not easy it's just years of constant constant practice This is not about detailing, it's about blocking in with, in this instance, different values. It's not even colour, if you think about it. <clears throat> it's about different values of paint. Blacks, whites, greys, that's all it is. I should really show you what I'm doing. I got a little pot of water that's under my easel. I can see that's there. And I just swish my brush out, rubbing the bottom of the container. And then I do that onto a kitchen towel that I've got onto my working station. And then I tap that. So kitchen roll. And that's what I do. So that the moisture that's in there is all it takes to but a very, very light colour wash down onto the canvas itself. Now there is another tip that I'd like to share with you at this particular moment in time. And this tip is very simple. It's so quick, you're going to blink and this video is going to be completely over. Right, I don't want to keep dipping into my water and adding it to my paint. And the more water you put to your paint, the thinner your paint is going to get. The more uh, uh, the more um, thinned it's going to be, that means it is eventually going to get beyond the 45% rule and flake. Yes, it is. So we've talked about the medium mix, and that's good. But we've got to remember every time we thin that paint down, it is going to thin down. That's why it's called thinning. So we can rectify that by getting some kitchen roll scrunching it up in a ball, getting some water, just just tapping it. We don't want to sop it, we don't want to get it sopping wet, we don't. And then you can put that down and I can get my brush and just get the moisture off it because it has been in. The... And I can just tap my brush onto that and there's enough moisture in that kitchen roll in order for me to get some paint off my palette and put it down where I want it to be. Now what you've got to remember about that is very simple. You wash your brush and you scrub on the bottom of your pail and you rub it dry on a bit of kitchen roll, an old towel, an old flannel or something like that. You tap it dry onto some kitchen roll as you can see. Then you can pick up some moisture, go back into your paint, and there's enough moisture on that paint, on that paintbrush, to allow you to paint with it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's how you can use your paintbrush and your water to the best of its ability without over thinning paint stem. Again, I'm going to do that once more. I'm going to wash my brush. I will drag it back and forth onto my towel in. I will take the moisture off. And now this time I won't go into the, tish the kitchen roll. I'll just take whatever moisture is on the brush and I will use that to blend in my colour that's on the canvas. 
and easy. So, the next stage to this now would be to let it dry and then glaze it with whatever colour you, you feel fit. Um, I'm going to put the raw sienna wash over that, I'll glaze over that and I'll show you how that will stand out like it's got folds. So the next stage after that is to go direct to painting. That means we're actually going to be using the um, raw sienna or whatever it is with and, and working with values within that particular colour itself. It's basically the same principle but it's a little bit more harder to judge. So without further ado, we'll um, clean up and um, we'll get on to that on the next session. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it and painting it, I must add. And um, well, thank you very much for watching. Check me out on Facebook. You can join me on Twitter. Don't forget to check those playlists out and I invite you to press the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Clive from Clive's Art and I will see you on the next episode. Bye bye.